right, guys, so take a look at this bike. This is an Indian Roadmaster. I've never driven an Indian Roadmaster. Pretty awesome bike. Look at how big it is in the front. <laughs> this is like, I think this is one of the biggest Indians I've ever seen. Kind of the cool thing about this bike, look at all the chrome on it. And I noticed the seats heat and cool. How awesome is that? That is, <laughs> that's, a, that's a really big bike. Well, it makes the, kind of the hard thing about these big bikes is trying to put your leg over. Oh, it seems a little bit top heavy on this bike. All right, let's see if I can get it up and going here. So you hit the little little button and that kind of starts it up. There's like a little power button right here and you have a little start up and then you pull on the clutch. Uh, maybe you have to have it, maybe you have to have it neutral, huh? Sure enough, you have to have it neutral. And the windshield goes up and down just like the other ones. Okay. All right, so kind of the tricky part about a new bike, it looks like we got a few people behind us. It's trying to figure out where the friction zone is. And kind of the weird thing about this is you can see there's a little bit of play where you don't really get any. <laughs> it's kind of the weird thing about Indians, they have a little bit of play here. And in the friction zone, there's there's quite a bit of, of play. Take a look at that. The, the big, huge friction zone all the way out here until you finally uh, start, uh, you know, engaging the clutch. So you kind of have to get used to these Indians. It has a little bit different of a friction zone. You kind of have to let them out a little bit, and then you have to kind of work with the gas. And that's that's kind of, a, kind of the trickiest part of these Indians that I found as far as kind of working the clutch and the gas. But it's really easy once you get used to it. This one has a lot of protection from the wind all over. Take a look at that brake pedal. That's pretty interesting. And look at the master cylinder. It's like right next to the brake pedal. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that before. A lot of times they mount them in the back. And... The thing I really like about this is take a look at this. They have one vent open on one side and one vent closed. You can actually see the vents right down there. So it'll be kind of interesting to see one vent versus the other. It has a couple buttons up on the top. Nice little leather strap right down here. All right, and we're going. Here we go. All right, so let's take a look at this. Nice. And kind of the weird thing about these big baggers like this is when you first take a look at them, it seems like it's really intimidating to, to get on a, one of these really big bikes. But once you start driving them, it is super easy to learn them. It seems like really super easy because they're just so comfortable. <laughs> you know, once you get going, it's like one of the easiest things to drive are these big baggers and this one the only the only thing you really have to watch out for is like on this one it's a little bit top heavy so if you slow down and you come to a stop you definitely don't want the handlebars turned especially if you're leaning at all because i've actually seen these if you lose control uh and uh it starts going down you you can't stop it that that, that brake pedal is kind of interesting All right, so the blinker did not auto cancel, which is interesting around that corner. Anyways, all right, so I think we're gonna stop and wait for some of these guys here. We don't wanna lose everyone else behind us at the stoplight. <laughs> so I think today it's not quite as long as a drive. It seems like I'm really getting used to these uh, the controls on these Indians, which is nice. Oh, this is kind of interesting. Moving it back and forth, it seems really easy to move. You know, some of these are really stiff, and this one seems like it, it's really a lot easier to move than some of your bigger motorcycles, which is pretty nice. So, let's see. Has an interesting sound. <laughs> it's has, it has an interesting deceleration sound. I don't know if you can hear that, but it kind of, kind of, it's it, it it sounds really good decelerating. It's kind of hard to capture it on the video because I have my, uh, I actually have my uh, my microphone in my helmet, which kind of drowns everything out. Oh, 
let's see, going around the corner, pretty nice, pretty nice, pretty nice. Let's see, I think we lost some people. Kind of getting split up a little bit. Yeah, that's the hard thing with riding with so many people. <laughs> it's hard to keep everybody together so people don't get lost. All right, so as far as the stance, it's kind of an interesting stance because I'm almost, my, my elbows are pretty bent. I'm not, I'm like, I'm like completely straight up, completely straight up, and my elbows are still bent, which is pretty interesting. I'm almost like, it's almost like, <laughs> I'm almost like lean back a little bit, which is pretty wild. All right, so we are getting a little bit of wind. Let me, wow, that's, that's just weird. All right, so the weird thing <laughs> is the deceleration sound on this bike. It sounds really weird. It, it just sounds like it's popping, like a pop, 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 pop. As far as the deceleration, which is, I've never really heard on any of the other bike, which is kind of interesting. All right, so the seat's super comfortable. It seems like, the, kind of the interesting thing on this bike is, you know, I'm actually six foot four, uh, 230 pounds, and usually the floorboards will bring my knees up above the tank to where it's a little bit uncomfortable because it feels like my feet are too high. But on this particular setup, it seems like the seat kind of compensates for the floorboards being high, where the seat is really up high. So it's really a pretty nice stance on here for someone who's pretty big. And the floorboards are pretty big. <laughs> we, need to, we need to like get up to speed or something here. Let's see what we're doing. All right, we're gonna we're gonna pull over and see if we can let everyone kind of catch up here, so we can all kind of be together. So slow speed stability is kind of like what you'd expect on a bike like this. Uh, it's a little bit top heavy, so it kind of kind of leans over a little bit. All right, so we lost one already. <laughs> All right, so this bike is pretty nice, actually. The seat is super comfortable. Uh, as far as the height, I find a lot of these Indians, it's kind of interesting that the Indians seem like they're set a lot lower than a lot of your Harley Davidsons. So I would think that, you know, if you're like a shorter person looking for like a big bike, something like this, seems like the Indians are the way to go. I really like this really big foot pedal as far as the brake. All right, so we're gonna go. All right, here we go. So my blinker did auto cancel there. All right, so this seat is really comfortable. <laughs> it has a really good sound. That's one, one thing about the Indians that I really like compared to the Harley Davidsons is the sound. You know, the stock sound on these Indians is way better than the stock sound on a Harley Davidson. Of course, you know, you can change the the, the exhaust and you, you, just, you, you can even do like slip-ons on an exhaust and kind of get that sound. But it seems like uh, on almost every bike, uh, as far as the Indians that I've been riding, it has a much better stock exhaust sound. Like when I was doing demo days with Harley Davidson, we take out like 12 bikes and you couldn't hear any of them. <laughs> Which is pretty amazing that the Indians now are louder than the Harley Davidsons coming out of the factory. And it's not too loud where it's like, you know, raising the dead loud that you'd see on some bikes, but it's definitely loud. So we're going, we're going about 45, pretty nice at 45, going 50 now. Let's see, let's see, uh, in top gear, uh, wow, wow, top gear. So I'm going uh, over 50, I'm at 2,000 RPM. That's the other thing that's kind of interesting with a lot of these Indians, that they seem like they're more geared for the highway, where you don't have a lot of low-end torque when you first take off on the bike. 
but it doesn't take it doesn't take much to actually uh, it doesn't take many RPM to really get up and go on these bikes. So 2,000 RPM, we're going like 55, <laughs> which is pretty wild. There's a lot of bikes today. They actually have the uh, the Veterans Rally going on. This is part of the the Veterans Rally uh, over here in Woodland Park, Colorado. So this has a pretty nice suspension, really super smooth, which is pretty nice. I'd say this is up there with the uh, uh, the Challenger as far as the one of the nicest suspensions probably of any bike that I've ever ridden in my life. So it almost seems like I don't know if the I don't know if the Challenger is better than this. <laughs> If it's smoother, just a little bit maybe. They're both really super smooth. So the probably the smoothest bikes I've ever ridden was, in, uh, you know, in my probably I don't know how many bikes I've ridden now, maybe 30 bikes or so. I'd say it's probably you know most people say that the the Honda Goldwing is like the smoothest, but I found that some of these bikes are actually smoother. I would dare say that this one might be a little smoother than a Honda Goldwing. And even smoother than that, or probably like on par with this, maybe even a little smoother than this, I'd say it's probably like the um, uh, the Harley Davidson Ultra Limited, which is super smooth. So both of them are really super smooth. All right, so <laughs> we got a, a tight turn with a tight turn with a yeah. <laughs> You gotta kind of get used to your bikes on this one. All right, so that was a that was a nice test drive. But yeah, this is a really nice bike. So the kind of the weird thing on this one is you have to kind of let out the clutch till you get to the friction zone. <laughs> That's kind of what I find on some of these. You have to let the clutch all the way out to the kind of the friction zone right there, and just kind of hold it there at a stop. So when you take off, it it would almost be better if uh, if you kind of had the the friction zone start right, you know, just right when you let off the clutch. So it has some pretty good power. And I know on a lot of these bigger bikes, you know, sometimes the bike is so big that a lot of times uh, uh, you wish it kind of had more power. And some of these engines, I'm not sure on this one, let's see. Uh, See if we can change it. Yeah, we're not in sport mode, so now we're in sport mode. All right. So we're actually in standard mode. So all right, so we're going 50 into the wind. There's, it's pretty choppy. <laughs> so it's a it's a really windy day today, actually. It's pretty choppy going into the wind. As far as kind of right on top of my helmet and. Uh, it feels like the, the windshield's all the way up. So personally for me, I would I prefer it if the windshield was like maybe another inch taller. Yeah, but see, since I switched to smart mode, these engines can kind of trick you because they have the, the road mode and then the, all the way up to the sport mode. And if you go down to like the, the lowest setting, it seems like you have like half the power, even less than half the power. So they can really trick you as far as uh, Kind of just jumping on and riding. I don't know why they do that. <laughs> I think they should have full power all the time. But maybe you know if you're like riding in rain or something, you want to make sure you don't spin out the tire. I suppose you can go down to like road mode. But they can kind of definitely can kind of trick you on these engines. So some of the first ones I drove, it's kind of interesting. I was like, man, this thing does not have any power until you realize you can go into the menu and change it. And the thing I really like about the touch screen is you can do it with gloves. Let me tell you, I actually have uh, my phone mounted on my motorcycle and on my, uh, I actually have a Galaxy Note 9 that does not work with just regular leather gloves. You actually need touch screen gloves to, to change anything on my phone. And on this, I'm just using straight leather gloves and doing the touch screen and it's working every time. Seems like it's, it's a really good touch screen. The seat is super comfortable, no problem at all. I wish the floorboards were maybe an inch or two, a little bit lower, but I'm really big. Get a little bit of, 
choppiness on my helmet, but I have the windscreen all the way up, and uh, I'm not really getting any buffeting. Well, we're going 50. Sometimes you get really bad buffeting going like 80. <laughs> and that's kind of where, you know, you kind of want to dial in on like a slightly larger windscreen. I think you can change the windscreens out on these, so... You know, if you duck down a little bit on these, you get like no buffeting, like zero buffeting. So if I was a little bit shorter, this would be perfect. But being six foot four, yeah. I'd say, you know, the ideal windscreen would be at least an inch taller, maybe just one inch. And then it can, a lot of times, a lot of times you can kind of dial in the, the windscreen to kind of eliminate that buffeting. But as far as the amount of wind, I could definitely tell the difference on my left leg versus my right leg. Like, so it's kind of nice that just one fence open because so you can see the difference between your uh, different legs. So I'm getting a lot of wind. Well, not not like your not, not not like open wind on my left leg, but a nice breeze on my left leg. And then over on my right leg, where the vent is closed, it'd be great for a cold day because it's blocking almost all the wind. So those vents really work nice as far as letting some air in. <laughs> so definitely, definitely plenty of power. Yeah, you're not really wishing for more power on this one. Uh, so the Challenger, I think the Challenger felt like it had almost scary power. It almost felt like I was going to lift the front wheel off the ground in sport mode or the, the, the kind of the most aggressive mode on that Challenger. Where on this one, it seems like you got plenty of power, but it doesn't feel like it has so much power that you're going to lift the front end off. Of course, it's a, it's a bigger motorcycle. I've yet to have one of these big motorcycles feel like you're going to lift the front end off. Which I don't really like that feeling because then you have to have more throttle control so you don't really uh, lift up the front end or get in trouble. Yeah, this definitely has plenty of power. You're not really, you're not really wanting more power on this one. All right, so that was a, a pretty nice demo ride right there. So yeah, so around the corners, not too bad. You don't have to press too hard around the corners like you'd actually see on some bikes we have to press really hard on the handlebars all right uh let's see i think we're gonna stop here and let these guys go looks like a whole group yeah we don't want to mix in with these guys because <laughs> we'll get lost we won't know who's who so kind of the weird thing on these indians yeah you have to like let the clutch you have to let the clutch out quite a bit to find that friction zone. And sometimes it can be kind of challenging trying to figure that out. Wow, there's a lot of bikes in this group. Hmm. There are so many bikes here, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's almost like you have to give it a little gas and then slowly let out the slowly let out the uh, the clutch. <laughs> the deceleration pop is pretty wild. <laughs> I love the sounds of the the sound of these Indians. It's pretty amazing. Completely different than you'd see in like a stock Harley Davidson. <laughs> I love it. That's like the best part about the whole bike is the, is the exhaust sound on these engines. Pretty nice. It seems really, it seems really easy to move back and forth, which is pretty nice. Once you get used to this one, the back brakes are really good, really super good. You don't have to press hardly at all. Front brakes, the front brakes are almost exactly the same as the back brakes. Both of them are really good, which is usually, usually the front brakes are really good and the back brakes are awful on a lot of your bikes. So this is, this is really nice, really nice brakes on this one. I really like this bike. I would definitely buy this bike. 
probably one of the best ones if you're looking for something big like a big highway cruiser or something like that i definitely buy this bike this is really nice i really like the vents that's a big thing where you can really control kind of the air flow going in and out the other thing is i haven't figured out how to do the cool seats i wish i could uh figure out the uh let's see maybe under vehicle <laughs> let's see uh i don't know look at that i can even i can move everything with just my uh Wow, has a lot of different options on that menu. Looks like you can connect your phone, has a good speaker system here. I like that it has some air coming up through here so you don't, uh, you don't have, uh, you know, sometimes you get behind these and you just kind of like sweat because they're completely closed off. This seems like it has enough ventilation coming through to where you're not dying. That's where I was getting baked out. I haven't quite figured out where the, the cooling seats are on this one. Uh, let's see, has cruise control? Uh, the one thing I don't like about these Indians, uh, pretty much across the board, is that this button right here, if you can see this button, this controls the, the windscreen going up and down. And the problem is, is when I'm, especially when I'm giving it throttle, going around the corner and I'm trying to adjust my windscreen, it can get a little bit tricky. I kind of wish the windscreen button was on the opposite side. I'm not sure exactly what this button does. I'm not sure if I want to start playing with the buttons yet. <laughs> uh, I like that it has the fuel range, 239 miles to empty. The other thing that kind of blows me away is look at the speedometer. It goes up to 200 miles per hour on these speedometers, which is absolutely insane. 200. I don't know if I'd want to if I'd want to take this to 200 miles an hour. I actually saw one BMW that went up to 170, and that was the highest that I've ever seen on any motorcycle. But I don't know if I'd want to do 170 on that BMW either. Okay. All right, guys, there you have it. That is the Roadmaster. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.